Bojo and welcome back. I'm Aaron. I'm Owen. And I'm Chloe. And together we are Kingfisher King Games. Games. Today we're talking to you about one of my favorite, favorite, favorite intellectual properties, and that is the Lord of the Rings. Risk! Lord of the Rings Risk. Yeah. A lot of good memories uh, playing this game. Um, it's Dudes on a Map. This is our third video, third video in the series of Risk that we're, um, that we're, uh, <laughs> that we're following, editing, displaying. Together? Yeah, putting together. Yeah. So join us at the table to find out more. So here we have the Lord of the Rings Risk Middle Earth Conquest Games. This is brought to you by Parker Brothers and distributed by Parker Brothers. Uh, yeah. And it's based off the Lord of the Rings movies and books. Uh, on the cover, we got the imagery from the movies. Movie from the first one, at least. Uh, this one's for ages nine plus, for two to four players, and yeah, so here we go. Take the rules out. Here's the board. It's got a cool. Uh, it's got the ring on it. And then black on the other side. Oh, here you want to open that up? Yeah, sure. So you lay the board out uh, in the middle of all the players. It's got the different types of continents um, with the same values, same number of territories. Like this would be similar to Australia. Um, there's Arnor, this would be like uh, Asia. But uh, yeah, it's got all the, it's got all the regular, regular place names that you would know from the movies, um, fortresses, Strongholds, that type of stuff. Okay, so to set up the game, everyone's gonna choose what ar what color armies they want to be. Uh, red and black are for the uh, armies of evil. Yellow and green are the good guys. So everyone, uh, we're gonna take we're gonna play a three player game. So I'll take the green army. Third player is gonna take yellow. Then we take out the uh, red dice for defense and three black dice for uh, attacking. Ooh, there's a special one in here from a different game. Next, you'll separate these cards and put them into like piles beside the beside the board. So for the armies of the good guys, they have a creature, which is the giant eagle, a cavalry, which is the uh, rider of Rohan, and then the infantry, which is an elven archer, as well as uh, each army has two of these shields, which is their leader. So that's going to be the same pieces for the green and yellow, which are the good guys. And for the bad guys, there is a little infantryman, which is an orc, a cavalry, which is a dark rider, and a cave troll, which is a cave troll. The creature. <laughs> and, and the leader shield. So looks like these have the white hand of Sauron on them. The territory cards are going to be a little different from the base game or the regular risk. Um, still, one card will relate to every territory on the map. There's the Shire, North Mirkwood, Eastern Angmar, Buckland. All of them. Uh, We'll have a picture on them, as well as the uh, an image of the as well as an image of the, the units on them. Here's uh, the eagle, the creature for the good guys. There's the 
Dark Rider, Black Rider. Uh, and then there's going to be there's going to be leader symbols as well. And and the wild card with one of each symbol. The there there's an outline of black on the evil cards and then an outline in pink for the good forces. Another important difference is there are uh, adventure cards. There's three different types. These are mission cards with various uh, objectives on them and gives you a reward based on your evil or good armies that you have. Next there are event cards and these have a play immediately text on them. You'll just do what it says once you reveal this card. And lastly the, there are power cards. They will have this little star and a one symbol in the corner. These have uh, various effects that you can do during your combat phase in the game. And you can only have three of these, any of these three adventure cards at one time. These will just get shuffled up together and placed on the side of the board. There are rivers on the board, but you can only cross a river if you use a bridge. There are various strongholds in yellow gold around the map. The mountains are impassable, no matter what. You'll also notice that there are port territories. You can move from any port along a sea line connecting to another territory. There are also sites of power. You can receive adventure cards and claim mission rewards here. You'll also notice that there's this dotted yellow line representing the path of the fellowship. <laughs> Next, you'll want to remove these two wild cards from the territory deck and separate them into neutral, evil, and good piles. So in our three player game, for the setup of the territories, uh, the evil army gets all nine of their territory cards. The two good armies get their good territory shuffled, and they get four good ones each. And then the 24 neutral territories get shuffled, and they get five each. Place the remaining in a pile. In our three player game, each army is gonna get 35 of their one value armies. So we'll go ahead and count those out now. Now that we have our 35 uh, armies uh, counted out, we can take a look at our territory cards and put one of our armies on each of those territories. Uh, next, we're going to roll to see who's first player. Ooh, a six. And I got a four. And a one. So it looks like I'll be first player. There are going to be some open territories left on the board, so in turn order, we're going to claim those last territories. Now that all the territories are claimed, uh, each player gets to place their remaining, what's, the, what's remaining of their 35 armies into their territories, one, one army at a time. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So here's what our map would look like once all the territory and our 35 armies are on. Next, we can add on our leaders into any one territory that we own. Leaders have properties of strength in both attack and defense. However, they own, they do not represent a battalion in their own right. Leaders must move with the battalion unless they are moving during the redeployment phase. So if we went from North Ruin to Weathered Heath, 
the leader it helps in attacking there, or it would help in defending from these two armies. Whenever you have battalions involved in combat in a territory where you have a leader present, you may add plus one to your highest die roll. If a leader is used in combat when conquering a territory, then you must move the leader into that territory at the end of combat. If the last battalion in a territory with a leader is defeated, the leader is also defeated and must be removed from the board. If you have no leader in play, your leader returns to any of your territories at the end of your turn, before drawing cards. It is possible to possess two leaders if you are awarded a second by an adventurer card. If you only occupy one territory, you cannot put the second leader on that board. Two leaders of the same army cannot occupy the same space. A leader can be moved through a territory containing another leader of the same color during the redeployment phase. Then we can put all the territories, uh, territory cards back together that were dealt out at the beginning. In our three player game, each player gets one card each. No cards are dealt in a two player game, but in a four player game, everyone gets two, two territory cards. Next, remove the event cards, which have the this black star in the, in the corner. These two piles get shuffled together and everybody gets three cards each. Once that's done, the event cards can get shuffled back into this deck and this will go face down for later use. Lastly, the one ring can be put over the Shire at the start of the dotted lines. Object of the game is to score as many points as possible before the fellowship um, with the one ring leaves Middle Earth. You score points for each character you occupy. Each, and each Region to control as well as for card play and channels alley. And that's it for the setup. Whew. Huh. Hang in there because we're not done yet. The turn order for this game is pretty similar to the other two games of risk that we've done. First part is reinforcements. Uh, you get one battalion for every three territories that you own. So you count those up, divide by three. Uh, take any further battalions for the regions that you completely occupy, as in the regular game. Exchange your territory cards, uh, three of the same picture, or one of each. Next is combat. You can declare where you're attacking from, where you're attacking to, anything like that. Uh, again, roll... Roll your attack die, highest die wins. You can move, you have to move at least one army in. Own one here. He'd have to move at least one, but he could move, choose to move all of his armies or any combination. To complete your mission cards, which have these uh, pictures on them in certain territories, your leader has to be present for that. Once your leader moves into that territory, so here we got yellow moving into Weathertop. As the good guys, they get two extra battalions and there's also victory points on here. As noted earlier, this, is, this game is about points. The good guys will get three points for uh, getting their leader to Weathertop. Good guys only get uh, one. You can also redeploy. Uh, through any territories that you own. So, um, these guys in North Merkwood could, because there's a chain of yellow, they could go all the way to the North Downs, going all the way through here. You can also draw one territory card for every territory. Uh, you also draw one territory card at the end of your turn as long as you com uh, completely take over at least one territory. 
But on the bright side, there's something new in the Lord of the Rings Risk. In this game, the Fellowship must be moved. The Fellowship, represented by the one ring, starts at the Shire. At the end of the third turn, move it into the next territory along. The Fellowship's dotted path when it is in a territory with a die symbol, the dot. A die roll must be made, be made before moving it. The die roll must be higher than three. If the roll is unsuccessful, the fellowship and the ring remain at the at, at in that territory and the die must be rolled again at the end of the next turn. When the fellowship leaves the dead marshes, with the one ring, the game ends. The player with the highest number of points wins the game. To calculate your score, you get one point per territory that you occupy, plus extra points for complete regions held. You can also get two additional points for each stronghold you control, plus extra points are scored by adding up the totals shown on the bottom right hand corner your adventure cards. Any cards that are not played by the time the Fellowship and the One Ring leave the land, there are, they are not counted in, in final score. So that's how you set up and play Lord of the Rings Risk. Um, we were able to play a two-player game since we got the game. Owen, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I really like that instead of two um, different infantries, there's three different types and they're all different and unique and there's two teams yeah. and i like the lord of the rings theme yeah there's no we get away from cubes in this one we actually have miniatures yeah so that was cool um something that we found out when we played was when the ring moves there's no positive for the good team having it and no benefit for the bad guys when they f take a territory with the ring on it I think you were kind of hoping there would be, yeah. but the cards I think were really cool. Using yeah. the adventure cards to manipulate where the ring moves, getting reinforcements. Both of us, I think, struggled using our leaders because that was a yeah. new component to the game. But overall, this one, so much fun. I think I think it's it, it will definitely be playing it again. Yeah. Definitely gonna play. It's also pretty long. Yes. Oh yeah, I think we two-player game. We we played for about two hours, to, yeah. just over two hours to play. It still felt pretty quick though for me. Yeah. Kind of, kind of. yeah. Uh, Chloe, what were you doing? Because <laughs> <laughs> you did, we played. Did you? Uh, what did you think of what you saw of the game? Um. Well, I really like horses, and there's these miniature uh, horses, and, <laughs> I was, <laughs> and I was playing on. Like, I was playing with them <laughs> when my dad and Owen were playing. Oh, yeah. Another thing I like, the different... <laughs> there's only the four armies, so you can only play four-player game. But uh, the different colors, the miniatures are basically the same for the good and bad guys. But just having the different colors, they're a lot more vibrant than on the wooden cubes. But They're also... The bad guys have different miniatures than the good guys do. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Two different sets of miniatures. Yeah. Instead of just cubes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks for watching. If you would like to support our channel, like and subscribe for more board gaming content. We like to have fun here. You do too. Gigawabamin Minawa. <laughs> 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 <laughs>